Welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, we're going to make this B image today. We're going to be using Photoshop, Lightroom, Topaz products, and we're going to do some vignetting, some creative blurring, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So this is a camera raw image, and this is right out of the camera. No editing on it so far. The first thing I like to do in Lightroom is click the auto button just to see what Lightroom can do with it because it uses artificial intelligence. And that looks pretty good. It's clipping the highlights a little bit and the shadows. I'm not worried about the shadows. I think they're good, but I do not want to clip my highlights. So, And if I hover over this little triangle, you can see, see on the B there where it's clipped right there. So all I want to do is take the whites and just watch this clipping triangle right here and just pull this back till the clipping goes away right there and that's good um, then I'm gonna come down to detail here just to show you I'm not gonna do anything here I'm just gonna use the default sharpening setting of 25 it's very minimal I'm not doing noise reduction I'm gonna let Topaz handle that because they have the best noise reduction and sharpening software on the market today so we're gonna leave that alone uh, let's go back to basic here it gave me a little bit of a vibrance bump here, so I can just play with this a little bit, make sure it's not overdone. And I think that looks pretty good right around there. The overall white balance, I think, looks good. Uh, I have a Canon, and I usually leave it on auto white balance, and for, for the most part, it does a good job. So if the image looks good right out of camera, I don't touch it. So that's that. The next thing I need to do is go into Photoshop, but before I do that, I just want to show you also in my lens corrections, I have remove chromatic aberrations checked and also enable profile correction, which automatically finds my lens. And I always like to do that. All right. So now we're just going to right click the image and edit in Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop 2020 and that'll open up Photoshop 2020. The first thing in Photoshop I want to do is crop this image. So I'm going to get the crop tool and I'm going to leave it in the original ratio. I'm just going to pull this right side in a bit and see what I want here for a crop. I think that looks pretty good. Give it a little bit more up here. Uh, maybe just a little bit more. I think right around there. There's a couple things I don't like in here, like this little area right here and this red of a flower right here. I'm going to take care of that and I'll show you a really cool way of getting rid of that. All right, but for now, I think that looks good. I'm just going to go ahead and delete my crop pixels. Uh, if you click on delete crop pixels, when you do the crop and click this little check here, you're committed to that crop. You can't go back. So if you're not really sure if you like that crop, don't check off this delete crop pixels very important but in my case I'm happy with this crop and so I'm gonna leave it just like this now I want to duplicate the background layer that's command or control J and then I want to open up a, a plugin called uh, Topaz denoise AI to get rid of any noise in this image I think I shot this around ISO 800 so there's not a whole lot of noise in here so I'm just gonna let this do its auto thing here it does a little bit of what well, does noise reduction, great noise reduction, and it also sharpens the image a little bit. So I'm just going to let it do, do that, which is already done. And now I'm just going to click apply. So I'm just in and out of this program. It's really fast, except for the actual processing itself. It takes a little bit of time. It's, it, it is pretty quick, though. Um, but it's, it's worth the wait because the artificial intelligence does a marvelous job. I've never seen noise reduction software like this ever. It's fantastic. It totally removes noise completely, and I love that. Well, we denoised. Now we need to sharpen. So let's come up to Filter. We're going to go into Topaz Labs and Sharpen AI. And what we're going to do in here is do some really uh, great sharpening to our image here. Now this image here has some issues to it because I may have moved my camera a little bit. It's it's slightly out of focus in areas where I'd like it to be a little bit sharper. Let me zoom in here to 200% so you can see it here. It's not bad right here, but I think I can pull some more sharpness out of here. Now let me just pull here so we can look at the wings and the little hairs on the bee itself. Okay, now there's three modes in uh, Sharpen AI. There's Sharpen, 
they're stabilized and focused. Focus is if you, you know, were slightly out of focus, it'll pull those areas back into focus and it does wonders there. Stabilizes if you had a little bit of camera shake or something like that, it will take care of those issues. In my case, I know I may have moved my camera slightly, so I'm going to click on stabilize and I'm going to click update preview and let's see what this thing does here. It's going to use its artificial intelligence. I think you're going to really be impressed with this. So we'll just wait for it. Hurry up. You're almost there. There it is. Fantastic. Look at all the detail that it brought back. Look at all this right in here. It's really crazy. And then all we have to do is click apply. And we're in and we're out. We're not bringing out any noise in the image. In fact, even Sharpen AI has some noise reduction capabilities. So it'll remove noise as well. And it will not sharpen areas of noise. It's very intelligent that way. And this is a real-time um, process here. So however long you see it takes, that's how long it takes on my computer. It's an iMac 2019 with a 8 gigabyte GPU and a i9 processor. And we're back in Photoshop. Let's go ahead and zoom into this image. And it's amazing. This software has saved me countless images that were slightly out of focus that were just going to be throwaway for me. So here's the before and here's the after. And I'm zoomed really far in here. So pretty amazing job. Next, I want to do some spot removal. So I'm just going to get a blank layer and get my healing brush, which is J. That's the uh, shortcut for the healing brush. And healing brush is awesome. You just kind of paint over the spots and they just like magic go away and that's really awesome so let's just clean up some of these spots here I'm going to do this relatively quick and I think that's pretty good Next thing I like to do is just blur this background area out around the B a little bit more. And to do that, I'm going to use Topaz Studio 2, the focal blur filter inside of Topaz Studio 2. Now, I'm going to pull this all together so that Shift, Option, Command, or Control E, and that just stamps a new layer right here. I'm going to go to Filter and Topaz Studio 2, and we'll go ahead and launch it. Comes up really quick. Click on Add Filter, and then we're going to come down to Focal Blur. And we'll see this overlay here. Now the area inside of this circle here is in focus, but it does graduate. And you can see it starts to graduate like about from here over. I wish they have a line there, but they don't. Maybe in a future update they'll do that. I think it would be a welcome addition to this tool. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. First off, I'm going to make my image smaller so I can work on these handles here. And you can grab these handles also this way and change the shape of this. And I might want to pull this down a little bit because there's some focus stuff, things in focus down around in here. And over in there, maybe widen this out a little bit. This wing, I want to stay in focus here, but I'm going to mask this part back in, in Photoshop. Now we can come over here and uh, you can click this little target tool right here and get rid of the overlay. And now we can adjust our blur to see how much blur we want. So you can put a lot of blur in there or just a little bit of blur. I don't want too much. I just want a little bit of blur in there. Just to give me that nice creamy look in the background. Maybe something like that. And we'll just go ahead and accept that. And now we're back in Photoshop. I'm going to shut this layer off by clicking this eyeball here so you can see. There's the before and there's the after. So i got to fix some of this B here. To do that, I'm just going to get a layer mask. So just come down here and... Get a layer mask and make sure you're painting in black. If you're not, you can type the X key and you'll be in black paint. Um, actually, I'm on the healing brush, so I'm going to type B to get the actual brush. And I'm going to, my flow right now is at 10%. I'm going to type Shift 0 and get it back to 100%. I have a nice uh, feathered, uh, fully feathered brush here at 100% feathering. And uh, I'm just going to start to paint around here. And bring these areas back in focus, back on the back end of the B here a little bit here, down in here a little bit, and again that nice feathered brush is nice. And the background was already out of focus, so this is working out nicely. So I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller, and just I just want to paint, 
take this wing back in here make sure all of these little little hairs are in nice sharp focus here because I need that in focus and I might just lower the opacity of my brush down to about 20% uh, and just bring a little bit of detail back on this portion of the flower back here. I'm not going to bring it into full focus, just give it a little diffused look, something like that. And I think we're looking pretty good. I mentioned early these parts of the flower here in red here. That kind of bugs me a little bit in this little discoloration up in here a little bit. So what I'm going to do is get a blank layer. And then I'm going to make sure I'm on my brush tool and I'm going to option click right around this area, but not the color, but the color around it, this color right here. I'm going to change the flow of my brush to uh, 10%. So that's a shift one to do that. And the opacity, I want that to be at 100%. So I'm going to type zero. This gives me a low flow. So I can just simply come here and just paint over this. The more I paint, the more that color of green comes in there and just kind of sample around here so you can blend it in. I find this technique works really nice. It's better than um, trying to use a healing brush or a, a clone stamp tool. And I'm gonna sample this color here and just keep painting till that red goes away. I'm gonna come down in here and just paint over here. Hey, it just has to look realistic and I have that nice soft brush on there. Paint in here a little bit. Sampling all around that'll make sure you're getting a nice blend and that low flow like I said really helps you to just blend things in and you'll never even know that I did that down here It's a little light right here So I might just sample like this color right around in here and just paint over that and while I'm on this painting layer This little yellow over here bugs me a little bit. So let's use that same technique here sample that color low flow Just paint over that maybe grab some of that color and just kind of blend this all in maybe some of that and just like that we're pretty good I might just grab a little darker pink there and I think we're good the last thing I want to do is add a vignette so I'm gonna add a vignette around the B here and also I want to lighten up this the center of the vignette and I'll show you a really cool technique for doing that uh, to do it, get your lasso tool, and you can just type L on your keyboard to get your lasso tool, and draw a loose selection around your B. Like that. Now the next step is important. You want to right click and go to feather, and you want to feather anywhere between three to 400 pixels. I'm going to choose 325 and click OK. Now the next step is come to your adjustment layers and get a curves adjustment layer. And uh, you can actually use any adjustment layer. I'm just choosing curves because I'm just used to using it. And the next thing is this selection or this mask is opposite of what we want. So you're going to command, make sure you're on the mask, command or control I to invert the mask. And then you're just going to change the blend mode to multiply, which darkens everything in the white portion of the mask protects the inner circle here of the mask the black area and then just take your opacity and pull it the whole way off and just slowly build it to the right and add a little vignette and that draws more attention to the B and now I want to lighten the inner portion of the B here so I'm going to let's get another adjustment layer and we'll do another curves adjustment layer and here's a little trick if you option click or alt click and drag up onto this from this curves one layer up onto curves two so I'm going to option or I'll click and drag up. It'll say, you want to replace that mask? Why, yes, I do. Sure. Now, it's the opposite of what we want. So all we have to do is make sure that mask is selected. Uh, Command or Control I to invert it. And now we've inverted the mask. So now click on this little icon right here. And make sure your, your uh, properties uh, menu is opened up here. And you'll see your curves inside it. And just take the center of that curve and drag up. And that just adds a little bit of lightness to the to the B itself right in there. So let me click this here, this eyeball. There's the before and there's the after. Well, we're finished and let's see how far we've come. So if we come to the background layer and uh, option or alt click the eyeball in the background layer, we'll see the before. So we came from there and went to there. So I'm really happy with it. And if you're really happy with your image, all you need to do is come up to file 
and click save and that'll save that out and when you go back into Lightroom which I will I'll go right back into Lightroom and you'll see there it is right there save right back into Lightroom for you we can uh, turn the lights out in Lightroom type the L key twice and there's our final result I'm pretty happy with it I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you learned a lot well, thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And also, if you're not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon. This way, every time I upload a new training tutorial, you'll be notified. Thanks very much for joining me today on The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see each and every one of you right here next time. But until then, happy editing.